All right, so here we are. It's about time to um, do our next video on the Nakshatra series. So if you weren't watching the first video or you don't know what a Nakshatra is in general, um, a Nakshatra is an astrological uh, prim or it's an astrological unit of measurement, um, like a sign or a house, particularly in the Vedic system of astrology. But it has its its uh, function and its name in Western astrology too, and it's defined as the length of distance from our perspective that the moon moves in one day. So, if you were to measure the path the moon moves in a day, it's going to be roughly one twenty seventh of the three hundred sixty degree zodiac, and um, that. Uh, dividing 360 into, or no, dividing 360 into 27 equal parts is going to give us 13 and a third degrees. So 13.20 out of 60 degrees is the best way to measure this. So when you see each nakshatra is 13.2 degrees, what it really means is 13.20 out of 60. It's like 20 minutes out of an hour. And that's exactly what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a 13.2 degree, 2 out of 6 degree span of time that is the path the moon makes, in, or the distance the moon travels along its path, along its orbit in one of our days. So, that being said, today we're going to be talking about the second nakshatra, the second lunar mansion or lunar station in both Western and Vedic astrology. So the first time we talked about uh, the Ashwini Nakshatra, or the first lunar mansion, which is zero degrees Aries to 13.2 out of six degrees Aries. Now, this second one is still in Aries. It's um, called Barani Nakshatra, or the second lunar mansion or station. And um, it's going to be from 13.2 degrees Aries to 26.44 out of 6 degrees Aries. And um, as I said in the previous video, all of the lunar mansions have their own co-rulers in the same way that the signs of Scorpio, Aquarius, and Pisces have their co-rulers being, uh, you know, for Scorpio, south node of the moon, and Pluto, for Aquarius, north node of the moon, and Uranus, and for Pisces, Neptune, as well as their original rulers, which are Mars and Jupiter and Saturn, respectively. Um, this uh, each place that the moon moves, each each part of its path, each lunar mansion, station, nakshatra, whatever you choose to call it, is going to have its own additional co-ruler that's going to land a particular way of looking at the world that people with certain planets in these placements are going to have. So you know, if you're I say moon, but really any planet, every planet's in a nakshatra, just like every planet's in a sign and a house. So you're, what you're kind of doing is narrowing down your thinking and getting, looking at the, the, your perspective and your consciousness through a very particular sort of lens. Um, so you're narrowing it down further and further. So you narrow it into sign first and then house, and then you can narrow it into nakshatra if you want to go really deep and understand um, how you really, really think. Like as an individual. Um, so, that being said, Barani Nakshatra is, its co-ruler is Venus, so Aries obviously is ruled by Mars exclusively, and um, the co-ruler of the Barani Nakshatra, which is 13.2 out of 6 to 26.4 out of 6 degrees Aries, is Venus. Now, you know, you might think that because um, this nakshatra is co-ruled by Venus, that it's very, very peaceful uh, nakshatra, but it's really not, and this is why you have to do your research and not take things as face value, really understand that putting a passive, sort of chill, stable planet like Venus in the same area of influence as a very active, aggressive planet like, like Mars, um, it creates a person who has a lot of internal conflict. And in the way that the first lunar mansion of Aries, Ashwin, or Ashwini, 
has um, the co-ruler of the South Node, which is also an explosive, violent, sort of a little more spiritual, a little more moralistic than Mars, but still a very explosive, negative planet. These, those people have no internal conflict. You know, they're projecting their conflict out onto the world and using that powerful, explosive energy to solve problems. But when you put Venus and Mars together, you get a person who, you know, has this ideal about how a stable life should be, and then it gets constantly upset. So they they are it kind of has a Scorpio, uh, Pluto type vibe to it, in that these people are always sort of seeking stability and then getting overturned. And um, these people typically, especially if the Moon is there, or the Sun or the Ascendant, these people have very very hard. Uh, rough lives typically now obviously not everybody with this nakshatra or a lot of planets in this nakshatra or a major planet in this nakshatra is going to have a rough life but by and large i would say 95 percent of the time these people have very troubled existences where they sort of eat people's pain in a way so um you know if there's like because that venus energy it wants to absorb and level the playing field and sort of like Libra and like balance the scales and chill out. And then the the Mars energy constantly upsets it and it creates this sort of angry uh, vibration within a person where it, it tends to, they tend to absorb other people's emotional turmoil and drama around them in an attempt to level out the the, the sort of harsh nature of uh, that is part of existence and um they're very aware of the dark side of things and actually in hindu mythology the deity that rules this um this nakshatra is uh is their their god of death and actually it is um like akin to pluto or hades or hell from norse mythology it is the symbolism of the uh, you know, people dying in childbirth and people, um, you know, taking on, like, females taking on the pain of existence through childbirth and pain and labor. Um, and, you know, I know this kind of sounds negative, but that's the thing about astrology is that, you know, this, this art, science, whatever, it encompasses a wide range of phenomenon in reality. So, you know, I've heard it said that if if something exists in reality, astro there's an aspect of astrology that can describe it. And I've, I've, in my current experience of doing this for several several years, like five years or more, I believe that that is that is a true fact. And you know, these people are are prone to the darker side of things. You know, as somebody would be who had Pluto or Saturn or something like that in the first house, these people would be very prone to looking at the dark side of the of the world so to speak um so again and if you have this and and you don't feel this way then uh you know that's good you're fortunate and you probably have something you definitely have something acting on it that levels this out but like maybe your venus and mars are both very well placed or they're they're in really good terms in your chart they're in very good agreement but by and large yeah these people go through a lot and um as a um, general rule of advice with placements like this, specifically if Moon or Ascendant is here, um, you know, you have to learn to set boundaries and you have to learn to uh, really put your own emotional well-being before the emotional well-being of others because especially like if your Moon or Ascendant is here, you're going to try to want to take on your family's burdens um, to a great degree to probably maybe more than you can handle and uh if you don't feel like you're ready to take on your family's burdens and responsibilities at this point in your life you do have to set boundaries and um set uh set walls up so that they can't destroy your soul and make you feel all this pain and anger now each nakshatra does have a um what's called a shakti in Vedic astrology, which is the secret sort of metaphysical superpower of this nakshatra. And they're not all, like, beyond the realms of science, but they're things people generally, by and large, can't do. Like, for instance, how many people do you know who really have a good marriage, a good relationship? Very few. 
there's a nakshatra that that is their shakti and that is not normally considered a superpower but there's almost nobody who can do it so it may as well be a superpower um, it's a feat of great achievement and um, for this nakshatra the uh, superpower or the shakti is um, the ability to be a leader in your family unit in your broader family unit or your immediate family so you know people will often call on you to do that and you you might be a, a lot of people I've met with this nakshatra are people who get misunderstood by their family because they have a lot of good ideas and they're often born into families that are really troubled and people don't necessarily want to change so you know you've got a lot of transformative work ahead of you typically with this nakshatra so um sorry that this was such a heavy video but I've never I've honestly never met a person who didn't have dominant placements in this nakshatra who had an easy sort of happy slappy life through their existence I'm not saying it's impossible but I'm just saying it's rough so you know that's my personal experience um, definitely look at other videos if you want a a new perspective on this or different perspective um, but um, you know this is a rough one so you know I, I don't sugarcoat things so when I'm when I'm explaining these topics I tell it how it is I don't um, make an attempt to smooth things out where they're not smooth because sometimes this stuff is really choppy um, and uh, especially one more thing I will add especially with with Virgo ascendants having this moon placement is often in the eighth house of Aries and that can be really really troubling because that's a debilitated position for moon so again I don't want to get too negative but I'll, I'll just cut it out here but um this is a hard placement so if you have this uh, you probably already know that this is a tough situation but just know that if you find this video and your moon falls here and you're having all these tough situations in your life that um, that that is the likely one of the major contributing factors as to why you're experiencing that hardship now you're also going to look at um, the phase of the moon when you're doing moon readings and you're going to look at the house of it and everything else so you know there's a lot of different ways that this can manifest but I would say the core energy of this is sort of that destructive transformative energy that will you know tear you tear an entire family down before it rebuilds it in a better form so um, you know these people do have the capacity to be to take charge of their family and be leaders but it is hard won because they're usually born like I said into families that are very destructive and very um, harsh so uh, you know again maybe you have this and you've had a great uh, experience with your family and you're a natural leader but by and large yeah that's not the case so that was my um, video on uh, Barani Nakshatra and uh, I hope that um, you know, it was informative and descriptive and helpful for anybody. And uh, again, not to be super negative, but like I said, I just call it how I see it. And that's been my experience, I would say probably 95% of the time. So there we are. And, um, you know, the next video I'm going to make is going to be on the next nakshatra. So stay tuned for that. And that one's ruled by the sun, so it'll be a lot more positive. So, uh, but there we are. Not everything's you know, super nice in, in life. So that, that's how it is. All right. And that was my video on Barney Nakshatra. Tune in next time for Kritika, the third lunar station.